Hello, and thanks for joining me in this project using Mocha Pro and Blackmagic Fusion. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and this is the shot we're going to be working on. It's a straightforward composite, changing the time of day, but it gives me the chance to show a few different ways that we can use tracking and shape data from Mocha Pro in Fusion. Plus, we'll be looking at some compositing tricks using the standard Fusion toolset. We're working in Fusion Studio, but this workflow also works in the same way with the Fusion page inside of Resolve. So let's get going for some tricks with working with Mocha Pro in a regular compositing workflow. And here we are in Fusion with my final comp. And this shows some of the different ways that we could be using the same Mocha data in various situations. So we're going to be match moving in our sky to do the sky replacement. We're going to be using shape layers to help us pull a luma key on the background. We're going to be doing parameter tracking with the lens flare that's going over the top here. And finally, I'm going to be doing some stabilization on the image as well, which is this section right there. But everything we're going to do stems from this, which is our Mocha Pro node and the data that we're going to get from that. And this is where it's all going to start from. So I have my original image over on the right, and I have my sky shot over on the left. Now I can either come up to my tools and go to Boris Effects Mocha and Mocha Pro, or I can use the keyboard shortcut Shift Space to bring up my tool selection. And I'll just type in Mocha Pro there, and that will connect in. Now, before we come into Mocha Pro, I'm just going to take my background layer and pipe that into my insert. And I'm doing this even though I'm not going to be using the Mocha Pro insert module render. And we'll see why that's important in just a little bit. Okay, so let's come up and launch Mocha. And here is our clip in Mocha Pro. Now I'm currently in the Essentials workspace and this is where we're gonna be doing our tracking. And let's come to our final frame and I'm gonna create our first shape. And I'm gonna keep this really, really simple. So I'm just gonna use the X-spline rectangle and just draw a shape around about the middle of the trees here. I'll use Alt and one just to show us the overlay there, just so you can see that a bit easier. There we go, change that color. And we're gonna use this to track in the sky replacement. Now this is a straightforward shot. It's mounted on a tripod, so it's a nodal pan. And I've got nothing really else in the background um, on the horizon that's gonna give me anything further back in the distance. So these trees are gonna be good enough for me to track. And let's just come up to my layers and we'll rename this one background track. So I'm gonna use a technique called unlink tracking. And to learn more about unlink tracking, then check out the unlink tracking exercise in the Mocha Essentials course. And I'm just going to go link track, none. So when I track this shot now, this shape is not going to move. And the first time you do this, this might seem a little bit weird, but Mocha is going to be generating up tracking data anyway. And it's just going to be using this shape almost as like a, a scanner in the background to sort of scan uh, where the pixels are moving to. Where the tracking data is actually going to go is obviously into the surface. And again, if you want to learn more about the surface, then check out the surface chapter in the Mocha Essentials course. Now I'm gonna make the surface pretty big and I want it to cover pretty much the whole of the background where we're gonna be putting the sky. And let's not overthink this. This is probably gonna be good enough for now. I'm gonna come into the layer properties and in my insert clip, I'm just gonna uh, put in a grid in here, maybe a slightly finer grid, just to show you what this surface is actually doing. And the final thing before we track is to decide what the track motion options are going to be. What sort of movement is this going to be? Now, I might be tempted just to track in translation, scale, and rotation just for the, uh, for the sky replacement. But because we're on a tripod, the actual type of movement we're going to be getting from this nodal pan maps better to a perspective type of movement anyway. So I'm going to hit perspective. And let's track that backwards. And you'll see as the camera moves around that my shape in the middle that's tracking the trees stays perfectly static, but the surface where I've uh, 
mapped to the grid to is going to be moving around and tracking with the shop. And this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. And when that's finished, we can just play that back. And we'll just check out our surface to make sure that everything's moving as we want it to. Nothing's slipping. It's looking pretty good. Okay. Now, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to kind of abstract yourself uh, with what these different shapes are doing. So there's no reason why we should be happy with just looking at this grid when we did spend the time to pipe in the sunset into our insert. So let's come over to the layer properties, change our insert clip to the insert layer, which is what we're taking from that secondary input. And that looks like the, the motion's tracking in, but I'm not quite sure if that's the exact angle that I want my sunset to, to be in. So let's come into classic mode. And classic mode is gonna open up a few more options for us because we have these other modules down at the bottom. I'm not interested in the shape layer anymore. So I'm gonna turn off the overlays by going to view mat. I'm gonna turn off the outlines by coming up to the top here and just turning off the outlines and turn off my quick transform up there. So now all I've got is my surface with the sunset inserted into it. And let's check out the insert module to really find out how we can fine tune our sunset into place. In newer versions of Mocha Pro, we have the ability to use blend modes directly in the insert layer to blend our layers together. So if I turn this to multiply, we can now see some of our background coming through again here. I'm gonna press and hold down Z just to zoom us out a little bit. And I'll come up to my top toolbar and I'm gonna use the scale here to scale up. I'm going to use X to pan around. Let's scrub that through to see if everything's being covered. Yep, I think that's looking pretty good. Now, even though I've used the insert module to set up my surface, I'm not going to render out of the Mocha Pro plugin. I'm just going to export the tracking data. So let's come over to our tracking data again, make sure we have our background track selected, and go to export track. Because we're working in Fusion, we're going to go Blackmagic Fusion Comp Data. Now I can save this out as a .comp file, but I'm just going to copy this to the clipboard. Now let's save, exit out of Mocha Pro, come back into Fusion, and I'm just going to select anywhere in the uh, in the flow and just paste that in. So Edit, Paste, or Control or Command V, and this will bring in my tracking data plus uh, an input. It will automatically put a uh, an input in here. And this is a loader node, but it's the same as what we were inputting into Mocha here. So I can just happily delete that. And we can pipe that in. So this tracker has everything that we need. I'll come into single viewer mode, actually one here, and you can see the trackers three, four, and we zoom out enough or pan around enough. We can see trackers one and two. So these tracker markers are fitting in exactly where we had the surface points in Mocha. If we wanted these in a different place, we would have set that up in Mocha Pro before the export. But how do we use this tracker data? Now in Fusion, trackers can also do some of the compositing work for us as well. So if I take my sunset and pipe that in to the foreground of the tracker, and let's make this active in the viewer, We'll come over to the operation and we'll choose what operation we want. We can either use match move if we just want to use position, scale, and rotation from our tracker center. So let's have a little look at how that's going to work. There we go. So that's transforming into there. Or I can use corner positioning to actually fit it into the four corner points exactly how we had the surface set up in Mocha Pro. And this is the one we want. And now if we play that back, we can see that my sunset is being positioned correctly with the surface points that we had set up in Mocha. And if you're just doing something simple like a screen replacement or a logo insert, then that really is all there is to it. You do your tracking in Mocha, you set up the surface, export the tracking data to Fusion Comp, copy it to the clipboard and paste it back in Fusion setting up your operation either to match move or 
corner positioning. And we even have those same apply modes that we saw in Mocha Pro as well. And it just means you can do some of your composting directly in the tracker without adding any extra nodes. So now we have the first part of our sky replacement in place. We have the, the sky moving and tracked in properly. We now want to composite this a little bit better. I'm going to arrange my node layout a little bit more neatly now. I don't need to have the sunset hooked up into Mocha Pro anymore. We are going to be using that same tracking data that we created for the initial track many, many times. So I'm not going to delete this. I'm just going to have this hanging out and just going to hold down Alt just to bring in a my little dot, get this looking a little bit neater. And if I come back into our dual view mode, we can see I've got almost no detail in the sky in my original shot, pretty much nothing at all. It's just gray, overcast, horrible. But this should be pretty good for pulling a luma key to try to simply hold in most of these tree details. So let's try doing just that. Shift and space to bring up my tool selection and just type in luma key. I have a few to choose from, but I'll just use the native fusion luma key. Don't want this piped in there. Let's, uh, let's come over, move these over here. And we'll input our clip into the luma key. Let's put that into both viewers one and two, and we'll set viewer one just to have a look at the alpha channel. In the luma key controls, I'm going to just bring in the black values down there just to try and get as a good of a high contrast mask as possible. And that should be something for us to work with. Okay, so let's take the output of our luma key into the effect mask of the tracker. Let's take a little look at that. So now we're starting to hold in the tree a little bit more. There's a few problems in the color here. I'm not, oh, you know, I am a little bit concerned about that, but I'm not hugely worried about that. What I'm more worried about, if we take a look at the alpha channel, is the fact that we can't pull a good key on these buildings or on the boats down here because these are fairly bright. So these are getting taken out by the Kia as well as the sky. So we need to create some holding masks for this. And the easiest way to do that is obviously with Mocha. So let's come back to our Mocha Pro node, launch Mocha one more time. And I still have my background track that we created in the last exercise. And there you can see the data moving along in the surface. But let's just turn off the processing cog and the visibility on that and set up our shapes. So I'm going to come to the XSplint tool and I'm going to just come in and make some rough shapes around our background here. I don't need to be too detailed about it. I'll click and hold down Z to zoom out and X to pan around and then finish off my shape with a right click and right click as well on one of the handles to make those nice sharp edges. Let's tweak our points just a little bit. So far, so good. Give this an overlay, Alt or Option 1 to turn on the, the color overlays there. And I will call this one Garbage Mask. Great. Well, I could come in and try to retrack this again, but what's the point? We've already got a good background track. So let's just link our Garbage Mask to the background track that we've already created. And let's scrub that through. That should be pretty good. If we come to the first frame, you see that I didn't quite make the, the shape big enough. That's not a problem. We can either kind of keyframe it into place or I'm going to use the Uber key to make sure that it's going to be the same shape all the way through. So without keyframing, it's just going to stay that nice same shape there. Excellent. If I wanted to get a little bit more detailed about this, I can add in more shapes for things like the flagpole. So if I come to my rectangle shape, I can go X plus to add this to my garbage mask layer. Just bring this in roughly, right click, select all in spline, turn on my transform tool, and I could just hold down control or command just to maneuver that into place. There we go. And I'll do the same thing with my ellipse tool, X plus, and just put that on top. 
And because I use the plus, they're all going to the same layer. So I don't have to manually link in multiple objects. If I'm happy with that, I'm going to come down and export these shapes. So export data, export shape. And again, it's going to ask me which format I want to use. I'm going to choose Black Magic Fusion. I'm just going to take out my selected layer, which is my garbage mask, either saving this out as a separate file or just copying this to the clipboard. Now I can save one more time, exit out of Mocha and come back into Fusion. And I'm going to paste it again, Control or Command V or coming up to Edit Paste. There we go. And it's brought in my masks, except it looks like it's only brought in one mask node. But if I click off on this and then move these around, you'll see that we in fact have three, one for each of the splines that we created in Mocha. And to get all these working together, I'm just going to connect them top to tail. So we take a look at the garbage mask over there. That's what my garbage mask is doing. All right. So let's pipe my garbage mask layers into the garbage mat input on the Luma key. Right, let's, let's come over here somewhere so we can see this bit better. And piped in, and that holds in those details for me. So we come to a single viewer again. Let's deselect everything, just play that back. We've now imported those shapes from Mocha and are using those in our main composite. Now, if I click on any of these shapes, because these are now fusion shapes, I can use my fusion controls to decide how they mix together and if I want a soft edge or not. Here, it doesn't make any sense to have a soft edge. So I'm going to keep that down to a nice hard edge. And that's how easy it is to use Mocha shapes within Fusion. You create your shapes in Mocha, export those shapes out as a Fusion comp, paste that into Fusion. And if you have multiple shapes, you just connect those all together and use them in your main comp. Before we get to the next section, which is showing how to use Mocha Pro data with parameter tracking, I'm just going to get this comp looking a little bit better. And I'm also going to do a quick color correction just so that the uh, the background and the foreground are matching together a bit more. Shift and space. I'll just use a regular color corrector. Add that in. Let's just arrange this so that the color corrector is only affecting the input into the tracker. It's not affecting the Luma key because that would affect our key every time we make any changes here. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, because we're at sunset, I kind of want the, uh, the contrast to go down a little bit. This is going to lift the blacks to make everything a bit brighter. So we'll compensate for that. So I'm going to take the gamma down. I do want the black level lifted a little bit, but maybe not quite as much as that. So sort of in this kind of area. And then I can use my wheels just to add in a little bit of warmth in there. Please don't think I'm not aware of what's happening in the trees over here. Believe me, I am. We will be getting to that later. Let's just play back where we are right now. So we have our sky composited in. We have a Luma key pulled on the background with our Mocha garbage mask. The next thing I'm going to do is try to add in a little bit of light. So I'm going to add in a lens flare uh, over here. This is going to do a couple of different things. It's hopefully going to help to tie the scene together a little bit. And if I'm lucky, it's going to hide some of the sins that we've got with the dodgy composite. Let's come in, shift space and type in lens flare. I have a few lens flares to choose from. I'm going to be using the Sapphire lens flare. It's, it's my personal favorite, so why not? And let's just hook that up there. This isn't the style of lens flare that I'm really after. So I want to choose a different style. But here's, here's just a little workflow tip. Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to pipe in my original uh, sunset into the input of the, the lens flare before I come in to load preset. And the reason I'm doing that is because Fusion can get a little bit sensitive when we're starting to work with bigger comps and it's trying to feed in external frames into our effects plugins. So instead of poking the bear, we'll just take the easy way here. Now with Sapphire Lens Flare, we've got a lot of uh, flare presets to choose from. I'm just going to come into new here 
and have a little look around here. I actually think that the 30, uh, 30 mil uh, Takina is actually going to fit in quite nicely. It's got the same, the same sorts of tones. It's, it's got some nice sort of obvious flares. Let's just load that in. And I'm going to hook that back up to the main comp. Play that around. I think that's going to fit in quite well. Now, Sapphire and Continuum effects have an advantage that other effects don't have. And that is they've got Mocha built directly into them. In this exercise, I'm not going to show you how to use Mocha built directly into the lens flare. If you want to see that, I've already done a tutorial in the Mocha Essentials course that covers that exact topic. What I want to do here is broaden this out and show you how we can use Mocha data with any parameter, even if it's on an effect that doesn't normally have Mocha in it. Obviously, having Mocha built directly into your plugin is a, a big advantage, not an advantage we'll always have. So this is how we use Mocha data to drive all the other effects. Now, remember, we've already tracked in our footage and we've already created some tracking data. This was the first thing we did. And we're going to recycle this data one more time because this Mocha data is extremely flexible. So just as we've used it to drive the corner pin for the sky replacement and to drive the mask shapes, we're going to use this one more time to drive other parameters. If we hadn't already exported our tracking data to drive the corner pin, this is where we do it. So we come in, export the tracking data as a Fusion Comp, and we do it just as we did before. Export track, Blackmagic Fusion Comp, copy to the clipboard, out of Mocha, and then paste that data back in. And obviously we don't need to do that because we've already got our corner pin data sat in the comp. So how do we use that tracking data to drive other effects? With Fusion, there are a number of different ways of connecting these parameters together with the tracking data. If I come up to the hotspot parameter, which is the one I want to change, just right click on that. I can connect that to my tracker node. And within that, I can connect it to any of the individual tracker points or even to the unsteady position of the, the tracker layer. So if I come up to the tracker one unsteady position, that's going to use that tracking data on the lens flare hotspot position. Is that what we really want? Well, no, not really, because that is connected to it. It's stuck there. So let's uh, remove tracker one and just reset that. Uh, so let's, instead of connecting it to it, Let's modify it with, and I'm going to modify it with an offset position. And when I do that, I can come into my modifiers and I have a couple of things here. I have my position and my offset. What I can do in my modifier here is maybe connect this to my tracker unsteady position. So this is the average of all of the, the four track points and then offset this maybe using the X here to bring us into the right area, which is going to be around about maybe here. Let's keep, keep it kind of low. And so as we move through on this one, let's just play this back. We can now see that that flare is tracking in and looking pretty good. And because it is so bright, I'll come back into the color corrector. Maybe just dip the lift and the gamma down just a touch more. And that's one of the ways that we can use Mocha tracking data and modifiers to drive different effect parameters. So this next part is all about how we're going to stabilize this up a little bit. So if we take a look, um, let's take a look actually at the original footage. It's probably easier to see it on here. If we play this through, you'll see that the pan that was created wasn't exactly the smoothest camera movement in the world. You can see there's a few little areas where it goes fast, then slow, then fast, then slow, fast and slow. I want to smooth out those movements and we can do that very easily using Mocha Pro and the Stabilize module. So let's come back into our Mocha Pro project. All right, so back in Mocha Pro, remember we already have our tracking data that we created right at the beginning. We're going to recycle this one more time. I'll press the asterisk on the number pad 
just to zoom to fit again. And with my background track selected, I'm going to come into the stabilize module. And I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to play through this clip. And you'll see, because I had my background track selected when I came into the stabilize module, it's got the cog turned on, which means that this is the layer that is being processed out for stabilization. As we play it through, it's doing a very, really good job actually of smoothing out that motion. At the default settings, it's smoothing it out across 10 frames and only smoothing the X and Y translation. So only smoothing out position, which is exactly what we want. But as it moves through, we're getting these big, big black borders. That's, that's not great. That's not exactly what we're after. One of the things I can do in my stabilized module is set up the frame list. So if I add plus on the frame list here, this is going to set the frames where I want this area to be at full screen. So if I come all the way to the end as well, add the end frame to my frame list, this is going to also be at full screen. Now, if I play this through, what I've got is I've got a combination of the smoothed out tracking data plus the interpolation of the frame list going from the first frame to the last frame. So if we take a look at the edges now. You can see I, I am actually still stabilizing out that nasty little movement. So I am still getting some, some sort of black edges here. So you can see it stabilizing it out, but we're still maintaining that main camera movement. And that's all I really want to do with this shot, I think. I don't want to get it much smoother than this. And if you'd like to learn more about the Stabilize module, check out the Mocha Essentials course. There's a whole section about the Stabilize module. But I'm just going to use this Stabilize data here. So I'm going to export out Stabilize tracking data and copy this to the clipboard just as we've done previously. Let's save this out, exit out of Mocha Pro, and back in Fusion, I'll make sure I have nothing selected and then just paste in my tracking data again. And just as before, we'll get rid of this loader that is automatically brought in, and we'll just hook this up at the end of our lens flare. I'll just rename this tracker to stabilization so we know that what it's doing. Okay, and let's come into the operations. And again, we have the choice of either going match move or corner positioning. And when it comes to stabilization data taken out of Mocha Pro, I'll generally use corner positioning because this better maintains the look that I established in Mocha Pro. But what else do we have to feed into this tracker node? Because if I just play this back now, you can see that the, uh, the tracker itself is changing position, sort of shaking about a little bit. There is some, some movement in there. There are keyframes in there, but we're not seeing the rendered result. And that's because we've only hooked up the input into the tracker node. I'm going to take another connection out from the lens flare and put that over the top onto our foreground. And now if we play this through, we are going to have a more stabilized result. Let's see if we can see the difference. Under merge, if I show the background only, this is the original layer. If I show foreground only, this is our stabilized layer. Background only, unstabilized, foreground only, stabilized. If I click off of the tracker, you'll be able to see that there's a little bit of a gap now on our edges because we have stabilized this out. If we were just using the stabilized render module in Mocha Pro, then we could automatically fix how those edges are, are changed up in Mocha Pro and that would render out correctly. But because we're just using a Fusion Tracker node, I'm going to manually change this. So Shift Space, type in Transform. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm previewing that and then come in and scale this up. I'm going to scale it up as little as I need to. And let's see how that's looking. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. It's a bit more stable. It's taken, taken out those big jolts that we were getting previously. We've got a much smoother, yet still natural looking result. 
yeah, I think the difference is clear there. And that's it. It really is that simple to use Mocha stabilized data within Fusion. Simply set everything up in the stabilized module, export out that stabilized data to the Fusion format, copy it to the clipboard, and paste it into Fusion. The only big gotcha that you'll find is remembering to connect both the foreground and the background to the same tracker node before you go in and set the operation to how you need it. And that, that's actually it for the Mocha portion of this tutorial. We've seen how we can take one main track and then recycle that data time and time again to do the sky replacement, to help create our shapes for the garbage mask on the Luma key, to do the parameter tracking on the lens flare so the lens flare tracks in correctly, and to do the stabilization across the whole image. All of that was done with one piece of tracking data from Mocha Pro used in different ways. And I've said it before, and I will keep saying it, that really is one of the, the big strengths about working with Mocha Pro. You track once, you use many times. In the last bit of this tutorial, I am going to finish off a little bit of the compositing just to, to finish up this shot a bit more. If you want to join me with that, then, then please stick around. If you are only here for the Mocha sections, then uh, thank you very much for joining me. And I'll see you again in another Mocha and Fusion tutorial. All right, so now we've weeded out those, it's just, it's just you and me now. So let's, uh, let's come in and we'll finish up the composite here. And actually, if I turn this into single viewer, my main issue is with this area around here. It's with the trees. Those are the things that are, are kind of definitely giving the game away for me. So I'm going to create a bit of a light wrap. and I'm going to use a lot of the same data that we've actually already got. The first thing I need to do is just get a version of this, my sunset, and I need to have that tracked into the right place. So I'm just going to copy my tracker. So this is the, um, let's actually rename this one. Sky replacement track, copy this, control command C, paste it, control or command V. And we'll hook both of the inputs into the sky replacement. So now we've got our sky here. Let's pipe the sky replacement back into the input. So we've just got this going over the top again. And let's go foreground over background. Excellent. Okay. And then let's pipe in the same Luma key into the light wrap. If we take a little look at the before and after, these are going to be identical because we've not done anything different to them yet. All we've done is place another copy of the sunset over the top, masked with the same key. So let's make that different. Okay, I'm going to add a blur and I'm going to hook up my Luma key into the blur and then take the output of that blur into the effect mask on the light wrap. And let's just blur that over the top there. So as I blur this, you can now see that we're getting a bit more of a glow going over the top of our trees. And we can have that subtle or we can have that, you know, really big. And I keep that fairly, fairly subtle-ish. I mean, we've got a giant lens flare coming through, so there is motivation for this light to come through. And let's see how that's looking. That's looking pretty good. We're still getting a tiny bit of that bleed through coming in at the top here. So I think the only thing to really do about it is to come into the Luma key and actually adjust that up a little bit. And it doesn't need a lot, I don't think. Just adjusting that there, just sort of bringing in that, making it a slightly higher contrast map seems to work. Okay, so if I'm happy with that, and I think I am, I'm now just going to replace the input into the lens flare with the light wrap. And then let's just see how that works for the rest of it here. Yeah, that works well. So looking back on that now, that's, that's looking pretty good. We've got nice natural glow coming through and we don't have the, uh, the sort of very obvious telltale keying signs. So really the very, very final thing is just to put in that last bit of, of color in there. And I'm just going to finish this off with Sapphire's color fuse. So this is a great way of adding that final little touch. Color fuse is Sapphire's, uh, LUT mixer effect. 
So I'm just going to come in and find actually a preset that I kind of like, maybe just the, the code of Chrome heavy there, load that in. And if we take a look at the before and after now, we can see just how far we've come using a little bit of Mocha data and a bit of fusion. I hope you found this useful. If you want to learn more about Mocha, then as I've mentioned at several points throughout this course, then check out the Mocha Essentials training. That really will go over everything that you need to know to be on the path to becoming a Mocha expert. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I will see you again soon. If you'd like to see more training for Mocha Pro and Fusion, then please let us know in the comments below. If you've got any suggestions for the type of project you'd like to see, then tell me down there as well. For a free trial of Mocha Pro and all of the Boris Effects lineup, head on over to borisfx.com.